Nightline continues from New York City with Cynthia McFadden. She is a true American original, trend-setting, mind-bending Madonna, an icon for the past three decades, if sometimes a controversial one. She is tiny in person, but her accomplishments are huge. She is quite simply the top-selling female recording artist of all time. You might think that would be quite enough. You'd be wrong. She's busier than ever. On February 3rd, a film she co-wrote and directed called W.E. Opens. Two days later, she performs at the Super Bowl. The last time we saw the reigning queen of pop, she was on her eighth tour, aptly named Sticky and Sweet, doing it all from jumping rope to her signature Vogue. She's come a long way since Like a Virgin. Now, the best-selling female rock artist of the 20th century is about to go on tour again. Has just signed a new music deal reportedly worth $40 million. Are you buying lunch? <laughs> That's what it says, $40 million. And nobody's handed me $40 million. I don't know about that. It looks good on paper. <laughs> it sure does. But that's not all she's up to. And walk. Madonna is also directing her first feature film. Perfect. Good. Check Very the good. gate. Directing seems to come naturally. She even directs okay. us. Now you need Beautiful. to open this back. You want to light us? Yeah. I, I like that. Your director thing kicks in. Here, move. What are you doing? <laughs> now we're both in the light. Uh, the film, which she also co-wrote but doesn't appear in, is called W.E. Happy birthday, we. Sweet. It explores the controversial love story of King Edward VIII and the twice-divorced Wallace Simpson, a union that would rock the British Empire. Your family will never stand for it. The Prime Minister won't stand for it. Then I'll give up the throne. And I will be the most despised woman in the world. Indeed, she was. Edward gave up the throne for the woman he loved in 1936. Have you ever been loved like that? I've certainly fallen in love with people who were willing to make big sacrifices for me, um, possibly not as big as I would have liked them to make. Um, and I've made very big sacrifices for people that I've loved. And the great discovery that I made whilst doing this research is that there is no such thing as perfect love. And I obviously know that in the back of my head. I'm not an idiot. But, you know, I have my hopelessly romantic strangely naive moments. You're a romantic. I am. Sorry. <laughs> Still, after all these years. Why not? Yes, I am. Madonna's love life has certainly had its own ups and downs. It's been three years since her highly publicized divorce from British film director Guy Ritchie. Her new love? 24-year-old dancer Brahim Zabat. You're famously dating younger men. Lots of talk about that. Is, is, is there lots of talk? Aren't people tired of that subject? No. Ugh, boring old chestnut. Okay. What do you want to know? Why? You know, I didn't, like, write down on a piece of paper, I'm now going to have a relationship with a younger man. It's just what happened. You see, that's the romantic in me. I just met someone that I cared for. And this happens to be his age. And what's appealing about it? <laughs> I don't feel comfortable with this conversation, but, um, you know, I, I don't want to live my life on my own. I love being a mother. Um, my children fill me up in many ways and, and, and inspire me in many ways, but I need a partner in life. I've never really lived a conventional life, so I think it's quite foolish for me or anyone else to start thinking that I'm going to start making conventional choices. So how are things going with her new beau? I'm the easy one. <laughs> I believe you, millions won't. Mm. <laughs> Are you the easy one? No, I don't know. I mean, I go home and I wash my face and I put on my sweatpants and I lay down on the bed and I say, oh, please rub my feet. And, you know, and he says, no, you rub my feet. Um, so, you know, behind the, the curtain, I'm just like everybody else. But she's also a master of controversy. The film dives right in, with sparks flying around whether the Duke and Duchess of Windsor were 
as has been widely reported, Nazi sympathizers. Because you could have sidestepped the issue. I'm interested that you didn't. You, you didn't need Why? to deal I, with that. I didn't, but I didn't, but I wanted to because I think it was something that was a real shadow that they had to live under. That's a huge libelous accusation. But what about those pictures proving the couple did meet with Hitler in 1937? I do not believe they were Nazi sympathizers. He did have a meeting with Hitler but so did a lot of heads of states and that didn't make them a Nazi sympathizer. But I think people started to spin this tale and this yarn and it was easy for a lot of people to to put that label on them. Despite what our FBI may say in retrospect. Well, first of all, the FBI is notorious for lying. Um, and second of all, there is actually no empirical evidence that can prove that they were Nazis or Nazi sympathizers. And um, you won't be able to give me any evidence. I promise you. Do you end up liking Wallace Simpson? Or... I, I love her. Yeah, I do. I see her as a human being. I see do you her identify as... with her in some ways? Of course I do. I identify with her ability to survive against all odds. I think she was deeply, um, deeply misunderstood by people. And I think you know, obviously I can relate to that. She can also relate to the fame and the infamy. This is her movie. This is her life. The cameras are so intrusive and the yeah. paparazzi, all of it is so breathtaking in a kind of way. Is yeah. that how it Energy feels? Energy sucking. Yeah. Is that how it feels to be on the other side of those cameras? Sure. I mean, there's a certain aspect to the cameras that feel like a weapon is being pointed at you and shooting at you. Is it exhausting sometimes? Yeah. Do I get to the end of a red carpet and feel dizzy and like I need to lay down and drink an alka seltzer? Sometimes I do, yeah. Sometimes it really does take your breath away. But, you know, I'm not really in a position to complain. I, it's a high class problem. She's got plenty of those. Like, what's she going to do with the Super Bowl at halftime? Stay with us. We're back now with Madonna, who is crazy busy these days, balancing four kids, a new album, MDNA, and a new film. Oh, did I mention a little thing called the Super Bowl? The public has all kinds of images of Madonna in its collective head. The material girl who expressed herself to save the world in four minutes. But what's most precious to her these days happens out of sight. Her role as mother to four kids. Lourdes is the oldest at 15. Do your kids ever say, Mom, you're just not cool? Do you get the eye roll? Because I get a lot of the eye roll lately. Um, they don't say it's not cool, but my daughter does say that's inappropriate. You're not dressing like that. And sometimes she's right. Because it's too, in what way, inappropriate? Well, like for instance, I went to the screening of my film the other night and I was just feeling fun and frivolous. So I put on this great beaded jewel Dolce and Gabbana corset that's just, you know, a little corset and fishnets. And I put a cape on and she came into my dressing room. She's like, Mom, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to my uh, screening of my film. She's like, that's not director. That's not director. Take it off. Take it off. It's inappropriate. And I was like, really? I just, I just, okay. She was right. She was right. I changed. And I actually put on a better outfit, and I liked it. The day of our interview, she was racing off to a dance rehearsal. What's happening now? I have um, 250 dancers waiting for me right now. And I'm, um, are they auditioning? Or yes, they they're auditioning for me. For her much-anticipated halftime show at the Super Bowl. So what's more frightening, having the movie open or performing live at the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl, for sure. And I mean, have you planned out what you're going to do yet? I'm in the process of doing that. And I have eight minutes to set up my stage, 12 minutes to put on The Greatest Show on Earth, and I have seven minutes to take it down. So that football field is clean for the second half of the game. And that's the challenge. How do you do that? Do you have an idea of what you're yeah, going to do? Yeah, I do. And a, a few things have been shot down because I can't do things that block sight lines or I can't. Then you could I, jump out of a plane or no? No, there's a roof on the stadium. Oh, well, that wouldn't Can't, work then. That would be no. ugly conclusion. <laughs> It'd be painful. I actually wanted to have a hundred drummers come from the ceiling. I like it. It's cool, right? Yeah. Cool. And? Drum line from the ceiling. Nah, the, can't take the weight. I know. 
So there's a lot of that. You know, I have ideas. I get like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then like, no, that's not going to work. Something tells me the director, singer, icon mother will come up with something spectacular.